Hello everyone, welcome to Tendi Garage. Today we'll be replacing the rear brake setup that includes the rotors and the pads on both sides for my 2020 BMW G20 M340 iX Drive. Hardware wise, this is pretty much all that we needed. We will be replacing the rotors in pair and it should always be done that way. So these are the two rotors that we'll be replacing at the rear brake setup. They are not side specific because they share the same part number. And let's get into the brake pads what we'll be replacing. Oh, and also we'll be using the rotors as Zimmerman rotors. They are a German brand. For the pads, I'm using Hawk Performance HPS 5.0 brake pads. They are more like a daily driver but with some spirited driving you can also see the pads kit come separately with the shim that goes onto the pad off the its back side and next let's get into the brake pad wear sensor whenever you're changing your patch you should always be changing that as well this is an aftermarket unit not from bmw so it's not as pricey next new hardware and new hardware and new software because it's a rubber boot i'm just kidding it's still hardware but that goes onto the guide pin and the first step of course we're going to lift the vehicle i'm using a floor jack on one side and i'll be using a jack rod from aga tuning that serves and turn my floor jack into a jack stand as you can see right there now that we have the vehicle lifted there are three things i want you to know before we go ahead and attend the job and the first thing being using wheel chocks as always since we're jacking up the rear end i am using wheel chocks in front of the front tire and the next one is going to be since this car runs an electronic e-brake system we'll have to disable it with some kind of scan tool some vehicles may have the system to be deactivated with a service menu just in the vehicle but for bmws you'll have to use some kind of scan tool this is so that you can retract or rewind the brake piston so that you can fit in your new brake pads because of the increased thickness from the old pad and for the scan tool i'm going to be using beamer link it has a lot of functions that also includes electronic parking brake deactivation as well as bringing it up with a BM3 Wi-Fi adapter. Navigating to Beamer Link is pretty self-explanatory so I'm not gonna go through too much about it. It's just uh, sticking your Wi-Fi adapter, Bluetooth adapter over your OBD2 port and then you're going to start stop button, press on it three times to enter diagnostic mode and then you will connect to your Wi-Fi adapter or Bluetooth on your phone and then just open Beamer Link. And you just saw that I press on the parking brake function and this is entering the surface mode. There are three preconditions you'll have to meet before you can activate the surface mode. First one being secure the vehicle against rolling off. So we have wheel chocks as well as the jack will do that. And the second one being release the parking brake. And the third one being do not apply foot brake. So I have my foot off the brake as far as possible. And then the next one, we're just going to press on the parking brake to release it. And we're just going to hit it. At this point, you should hear the motor that's rearing at the back. So that means it's retracting the piston as well as going into service mode. From the previous clip, you see it says there is an error code. Uh, the vehicle could not enter service mode for whatever reason. I searched online. I was shocked at first too, but then I searched online realized it's just a glitch within Beamer Link. So as long as you hear the motor that's rearing at the back when you click enter service mode, you should be okay. Next, we're going to use an impact to take off the wheel. 17 millimeter if you don't have aftermarket lug bolts. So this is your basic brake setup right here. So this is your motor and this is your caliper holding down the pad. Currently, as you can see, it moves. So that means the parking brake is actually not currently on right now. And looking at it, we'll have to, in order to get the caliper off, we'll get the 
guide pin bolt off and you may also have to counter hold the 17 millimeter right here with an open ended wrench uh, looking at this side there is also a parking brake or actually brake rear sensor right here that will disconnect it but we'll do it after which you'll see a box right here once I pull it off you should be able to see the parking brake uh, sensor connector but first off we'll just get the caliper to be removed and remove the brake pads remove the rotor, replace everything, replace the brick sensor, and that should be it for the job. And remember I said there are three things we should do before we're attending the brick job. The first one being chalk off the front wheel, second one being have the car to be entered into service mode for the parking brake, and the third thing we're going to pop the hood and access the master cylinder. If your car is a uh, left hand drive like mine it's going to be on the left hand side of the vehicle when we're talking about uh, the facing front uh, of the vehicle you will see this plastic cover right here you just do a quarter turn at the uh, clip right here and just pry out the cover carefully theoretically it should not be broken easily with the clips but just be careful when you're removing it we're going to set that aside and you will see your brake master cylinder right here so what we're going to do is actually just to pull off the cap when we are retracting or pushing the piston back into where we cannot push it anymore uh, at its maximum I guess retract distance we are going to relieve some of the brake fluid that's inside the entire brake hydraulic system back into its reservoir. So the last thing we want to do is to have pressure inside while we're pushing it back and then it just goes everywhere if you have brake fluid that's overflowed. So I'm just going to pull the cap or screw off the brake master cylinder cap and then I will place a towel over top of it. And as you saw earlier, the cap could be a little bit stubborn to be removed. Some brute force may be required. For now, I'm just going to put it, uh, put the cap back on because I forgot to bring a rag to be nearby when I pull off the cap. But now that I am going to be back with a rag, I'm going to pull off the cap and the purpose is to absorb any overflow fluid, uh, brake fluid, in case it happens when we are retracting the piston, because brake fluid is extremely corrosive. Don't get it on any paint or metal surface, if at all possible. Although this step is completely optional, but it's highly advised for you to do it, is to remove this diffuser or cover for the lower control arm with four ten millimeters underneath the car. It's going to help you to access the main caliper bolts. Going back to our rear brake, looks like I'm going to be in your way a lot since I'm right-handed and because of the camera angle, unfortunately. But you get the general idea. First, we're going to undo our guide pin bolt. That's 14 millimeter, possibly a counter hole for a 17 millimeter. It's actually so seized. Or the nuts, I don't even have to use anything to counter hold it. So one guy can bolt out. Second one's also out. At this point, I realized I couldn't remove the caliper before I removed the brake pad wear sensor. So it's pretty self-explanatory until how it's removed. Uh, you'll just pop off the cover for the black box that's for weatherproof purposes. And you will undo all the connections for the brake pad wear sensor. And then it's going to come out just like that. And now that the caliper is off, you will want to make sure you use some kind of bungee cord or an ass hook, something like that, to make sure you're not resting the caliper 
solely on the brick holes because you will eventually wear out the rubber material that's inside the brick holes and eventually causing a leak or something that internally you may not be able to see. Talking about the brake pad wear sensor, I know some people just like to yank it off from the pad connection over there. I like to keep it intact for that side and just under the connection at the weatherproof box over there so that I can reference back of its orientation when I'm putting it in. You can see the pads off and I have quite some life of the rear brick pads but I just like to upgrade because the fronts are also Hawk Performance HPS 5.0 so it's not going to create any brake bias when I'm braking. At this point, you can probably guess that the pads are relatively new. It was replaced just before I got the car at the dealership. I replaced the front pads and rotor with also Zimmerman. Last year, just before winter came, that's why I'm upgrading the pads for the rear as well, just to not to create any brake bias. Next, we are going to undo the hardware. That's where the pads are going to slide on. Uh, I'm using a mini pry bar. You can use a flat head. doesn't really matter as long as you can get them off. I usually just put or orient how the top and the bottom ones are just by my side when I get them removed, just so I can reference it back because the top and bottom may not be the same sometimes. Here I got a little bit ahead of myself. I'm removing the set screw for the rotor. You want to do it in order for the rotors to be off. Next, we're going to remove the caliper carrier or bracket that's held down by two bolts, 95.9 foot pounds of torque, which is pretty tight. First one's out, and that's why I'm saying to remove the bottom lower control arm diffuser cover because you will need that extra space for you to fit the ratchet or breaker bar under. You may also have to reposition your caliper several times for you to get that clearance to fit a socket in the breaker bar because the electronic motor is really, really annoying and that's going to be in your way a lot when you're trying to fit your breaker bar. But now that the caliper bracket or carrier is off, the rotor should come off relatively easy. Sometimes C's on there, you may need to use some WD-40 or penetrating fluid. But for mine, just a tap with a hammer and that's it. It's, it's out. And for a moment, bringing back the caliper bracket or carrier to the chat. While we have it out, I'm going to refresh all the hardware off camera. That means the guide pin, that means the rubber boot that's housing the guide pin or slide pin. I'm going to use some silicone grease, a little bit is more than enough, uh, just to coat around the slide pin so that it's going to slide freely. And it's something good to do, but not necessary. Going back to the rotor, you can see it's kind of loose right now. I was kind of surprised with a tap of hammer. It came right out. Kind of surprised, but good news for me. Then I'm going to use assorted sizes and shapes of wire brush to clean off the mating area of the hub and the rotor before I slap the new one on. The rotor that I'm using has a coating on the hub mating surface, so I'm not going to use any grease on it. But before you use any type of wire brush, make sure you have eye protection. And this part, because it's fast forwarded, it's very loud. I'm just going to mute it for you, but you can see how I was trying to get all the rust and stuff out. Good as new, and I'm going to spray some brake fluid to clean it off. The last step for us to do before we reassemble the entire brake system is to retract the piston so that you can fit in your new pad. And to retract the piston for one side of it, I forgot which side it was, I was able to push it by my finger, even just my thumb push it in, and it worked fine. But sometimes it's going to be seized. I know older uh, mechanics like to use 
uh, channel lock just to just to get the piston back into place and just clamp it and forget it uh, I like to use something like this and that's going to wind the rod in so that it's going to in turn push the piston back in it's uh, there are millions of ways you could do it so it's just really depends on you and to choose your weapon now you can see the rotor is back on remember to set screw to put it back in uh, hand tightens more than enough and then we'll get the caliper bracket or carrier for ease of insulation i'm just going to thread one bolt in i believe i threaded the top one in first and then we're going to thread the bottom one in i you probably know me at this point that i like to use or start threading bolts by hand first and then you'll just snug it up with a ratchet or a breaker bar normally because these two bolts are going to be 95.9 foot pound of torque that's a lot normal breaker bar probably if you're not pulling like very very tight on it you should not be able to do 95.9 foot pound of torque so just snug it up as tight as you can and then we will go back with a torque wrench to tighten them down to 95.9 foot pound of torque and this is the point where I realized taking off the lower control arm cover or diffuser is really important, at least for me, so that I can fit a uh, breaker bar or fit a uh, torque wrench because it has a long handle. And for you to be able to torque them down properly off these two bolts because that houses the caliper and the caliper houses your brake pads. And that's the only thing helping you to slow down your vehicle at this point that's i think the hardest part is to torque these two bolts and clickety click there you go 95.9 is applied to the bottom one do the same for the top one here is me think rethinking my life over and over again for the past like five minutes or so that bolt is not easy to get to because of all the room that you have and just tight tolerances Click the click, that clicked again, had to double check. There we go. Now that the rotor is on and we have also the caliper bracket or carrier is on as well, we're going to prep our new brake pads. Just personal preference that I like to rub them together to kind of get rid of the first surface coating and you may see some dust coming off of it. Uh, again, just personal preference thing. And we're going to reference the old one. That's why I don't like to yank it off from the pad side, rather to undo it from the connection side. You can see these two are identical. So you will know this is the back side, uh, or it goes to the back side of the caliper. And this is also the one that has the brake pad wear sensor just going to reference how it's oriented there is a notch right there and then you will just click that pad wear sensor in place you should hear a click once you have it clipped in sometimes it could be a little bit stubborn especially mine is an aftermarket part but it's kind of expected since it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg but now that it's done, so you will know, again, this is going to be the inboard one and the other one that doesn't have the brake pad wear sensor is going to be the outboard. And don't forget that you have a separate shim that needs to be put on or attached to the back side of the pad where it's mating with the caliper who piston when you press on the brake pedal. This is to eliminate any weird brake noise you may experience. And this is the type of grease that came with my brake pad kit. This is what we should do to eliminate any weird brake noises when we have the brakes engaged. We are going to grease up the ears as well as the back side of the pad where it's interacting with the piston as well as the hardware on the caliber bracket or carrier once again. 
and a little bit goes a long way you don't have to use a lot of grease you don't have to use the entire pack just a dab like that should be more than enough for at least one side of it i'm just going to grease up where the quote unquote brake pad ear is supposed to go on the hardware just to make sure you don't touch the rotor because it's grease and it's going to reduce friction but the brake setup is going to or brake system in general uses friction to slow down your vehicle that's why you don't want any grease on your rotor whatsoever you could get them onto the rotor just to make sure you use brake cleaner to get them off and don't forget you have a back side of the brake pad as well that you want to grease up and then we're going to grab the new pad, grease up the ear as well. A little dab is more than enough. And then you will do it to the top as well as the bottom. And lastly, is going to be putting back on the pad with the shim. It's pretty self-explanatory how it should go into uh, the slot for the quote-unquote years and you should just be able to press it in pay place and voila you have your outboard brake pad installed we're going to do the same thing for the inboard brake pad that has the brake pad wear sensor I don't think I've mentioned it yet but you only have one brake pad wear sensor per axle that being said the brake pad rest sensor for the rear at least is going to be on the passenger side. You should remember at this point that the at least the HPS 5.0 has a separate shim that comes with the kit for the inboard and outboard brake pads for both sides so you have four shims in total. I'll just do the logo that's facing out. I don't think it matters how it's oriented as long as you will be able to see that the inbound inboard and outboard shim are going to be different uh, but you should know right away because of the notches how it's oriented and here i'm just pressing it back on you may want to use a little bit grease in between the pad and the shim just to kind of like quote unquote glue it in place so that it doesn't go anywhere when you are moving it slightly it's also a good idea if you still have some leftover grease, just put a smear on over top on the shim where the caliper is going to interact with the shim and oops, it just fell down. Putting it back on. And like I said, just to make sure you don't have anything or any grease that's on the rotor. And now we're going to fish the brake pad wear sensor over the caliper and then plug back in the connection before we feed the caliper back onto over top of the brake pads and with a tap the caliper should go right in just like that Again, another personal preference is use a, just a drop of Loctite on the Kaikin bolt. And now that because we have our caliper is already in, uh, we are going to thread in the new Kaikin bolt by hand as always. And we're just going to route our brake pad wear sensor. Generally speaking, everything should be pretty self-explanatory in terms of how it should be routed you should be able to see some slots that's indication for you that the brake pad wear sensor should route over there there is some just uh, rubber grommets type of thing that you have to push in the connection and after you have routed your brake pad wear sensor it's very important for you to make sure you plug back in the connection over up top at the weatherproof boxes over there then that's where and when it's enabling you to be able to reset your brake pad wear sensor by the end when we complete the entire installation. Lastly, the installation is coming to an end. We're just going to snug up the guy pin bolt with a 14 millimeter socket with a ratchet and then torque it down to 35 Newton meter with a torque wrench. 
Good idea to have an open-ended wrench that's 17 mm diameter hold the nut, just so you get proper torque out of the bolts. Lastly, of course, we're going to put back on our wheel. I have this helper pin that gets threaded into one of the hole, and doesn't matter which one. You just thread it all the way so that it'll hold the wheel when we are putting the wheel back on. If you're beefy enough to lift the wheel onto it, you probably don't need this one, but it's just a helper, you know. I think I should still mention this one more time. I am going to hand thread all five of the lug bolts by hand all the way as far as I cannot do it by hand anymore. And then I'll use an impact on setting one and two later on to snug up all the lug bolts so that I'll have enough torque to hold the wheel as well as to support the weight of the vehicle when I lower the jack. Then uh, when the wheels are on the ground, I'll torque it down to 103 foot pound of torque, at least for this model of BMW. And then there you go, the job is complete. I'm just going to take out the jack rod and then lower the vehicle. That's it. Of course, we have the other side to do. I'm just going to do, I guess, kind of like an ASMR version of it before I go into conclusion as to the entire rear brake job. And if you don't really care for it, just fast forward to the next chapter I have attached to the YouTube and then off we go. Now I think it's a good time to conclude the video about swapping or replacing the rear brake setup on my 2020 BMW M340 iX Drive. As you can see, the rotor is not so, so matte anymore. The coating is all gone. Uh, you can see a little bit shiny out of the rotor. 
and then the brake pads are embedded into the new rotor as well you would want to go over the manufacturer's specs to see how it should be bedded in for the brake pads for mine specifically it's going to be 6 to 10 moderate stops from about 60 kilometers per hour to about 10 and followed by two to three more aggressive stops from 70 something kilometers per hour to about 10 once again and to allow 15 minutes to cool down the brakes before you do any more aggressive stops. Different manufacturers have their own bed-in procedure. You will want to follow that bed-in procedure to make sure you have proper brakes as well as proper performance that should be uh, yielded by the brakes setup that you have. The rear brakes aren't necessarily an involved job per se. I have done the front brake setup as well, which is the pads and rotor uh, about last winter. You can see there's some like worn spots over at the rotors. It still yields the same performance the day I installed it, so I'm not too concerned about the worn down parts. If I feel like when I step on the brake pedal, it gets wobbly, it gets a little bit like I can feel the groove inside the rotors, then it's probably indication for me to change it for the front one at least. But currently the back ones look fine. And up until this day, uh, it still looks like the same as how it shows on the video right now. So that should be it. And now that we're in an open area, this is the diffuser plate or cover for the lower control arm that I mentioned you should remove to get the main bolt to be torqued. I think you can't really mess up uh, brake jobs too horribly as long as you have, you know, common knowledge, um, uh, common sense really when you're attending brakes then you should be okay. And as long as you have the right tools, the right size of sockets, etc., this is, shouldn't be a challenge for you to attend. Overall, I really hope that you enjoyed the video and have learned something all of it, or if you already know how to replace bricks, this serves as a reminder on how to attend it again in the future. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up as well as consider subscribing to my channel as I have a lot more planned for my 2020 BMW M340i X Drive. And lastly, hopefully this video gives you the courage and the motivation to replace your brakes in the future when the time comes. But that's all for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.